Look at the ivy on the old clanging wall. Look at the flowers and the green grass so tall. It's not a matter of when push comes to shove. It's just the hour on the wings of a dove. That's just warm love. Okay, so we're going to start out by attaching the gut to the hook shank. I'm using about three feet of heavily waxed gossamer. I used about two different types of wax really. A softer wax that I use mostly for body work and then a harder wax for the head work. The softer wax is really sticky and just seems to grip a little bit better for body work and then the harder wax works better for attaching uh, all the bits and pieces for the wing. It just holds better and it doesn't slip as much as the softer wax does. So just go ahead and go down the hook shank and make sure you're uh, doing nice tight edge-to-edge uh, -edge wraps. Really want to try to get in the habit of doing uh, good underbody foundation lane. It's actually quite easy. Also, when you're holding the hook, you don't really have to like squeeze the death out of it. You just want to you know, have a good, comfortable grip on it. So work your way down. Once you get to about the point of the hook, you can stop and prepare a piece of tinsel. And go ahead and tie that in. I tie it in on top of the shank, so that way uh, it helps to build up the tag part of the, of the fly. And then I kind of go, as a general rule of thumb, I go to the base of the barb. And then I take a few wraps, uh, three or four wraps back up. And I usually do one extra wrap than what I would normally do. And then spiral wrap it and make it off by putting the thread underneath this, the spot between the gut and the hook shank. Now tying this off can be a little bit tricky. Uh, the extra wrap that I was talking about is so you can pull the thread out from underneath the tinsel. And so that way as soon as you bring it back over and across it's wanting to go over the tinsel. And then uh, I tie it, the tinsel off underneath so that way it helps to build up an even tape around top and bottom of the hook shank. And then once you get up to the point, again, trim it off. I trim it a little farther forward so that way it's, it evens out underneath the butt. Spiral wrap and make it off. You can burnish it a little bit if you want to. This is some tag and body Cambridge blue floss. This stuff is pretty thick and heavy and I know a lot of people don't like it but I love the color and I think it's worthwhile using just because of that. Um, you're going to want to try to flatten it out as much as you can. There's quite a bit of twist in it so just kind of stroke it through your fingers some, a few times and it should take some of the twist out. And then you're going to want to tie that in. And as you wrap back, kind of wiggle it a little tiny bit, and that should help flatten it out and spread the floss fibers over the tag. And as I go back up, I overlap it just a little tiny bit, and then I increase that overlap to help build up a taper in that section. Again, unwrapping the thread and taking an extra wrap off, and that way it helps to catch this floss. Could obviously use a much shorter section of silk than I did here, but because it's just going to get in your way. Once you get it tied off pretty good, just going to trim it out of there. <clears throat> and since it is such big thick floss, you're going to have to build up that section a little bit just so that way you have an even platform to set your tail on. You could put like a Z-bend in your tail if you want to, but I just build it up.
make sure you go forward and back so that way you have a nice level platform for your hurl to sit on as well as your tail and tail valings. Kind of can't see that, but close enough. You can burnish it a little bit. Not like it's really going to help. So then once you get there, I usually have to tie on a new piece of uh, silk. So three feet pretty much gets me there on a bigger hook like this one. This is probably about a three out, four out, depending on your scale that you're talking about. I just tie it on like you would another, like any other time you're tying on your thread. Just overlap on that, and make sure it's nice and secure before you go anywhere. Now you're going to want to prepare a a tail <coughs> or topping. In this case, it's actually a topping. It was a reject crest that I had wanted to use for a different fly and thought I would try it out. I don't normally use these sort of tails, but or a topping for a tail, but it seemed to fit the the hook and had the look I was going for. This bit can be a little bit tricky too. It's just like setting a tail in a in a vise, you know, when you first start out it can be, you know, really a problem. Uh, but just keep at it. You can tweak it to get it to sit where you want it to. So now we're going to cut out the sections for our tail veiling. Uh, this is supposed to be scarlet. This is actually green wing, um, which I much prefer because it's actually marries and it actually holds together and it's not all scraggly. Then we're going to use a little section of a macabre body feather. Let's go ahead and marry those bits up. And then go ahead and cut out a section of teal, or pin tail, actually. You could marry it like I did here, or you could obviously veil the veiling with it. It's another look that looks very good. And then put them back to back. Make sure they're nice and even, so that way when you go to set them, they don't want to roll and you don't have an extra fiber on one side or anything like that. And then measure it up, and this bit can be pretty tricky because it's just hard to do that easily. Uh, what I pretty much do is just a pinch and loop method, just making sure that the tail veiling is actually on top of the shank, and then I let the butts kind of do whatever they want, and then after I set it, I tweak them back on top of the shank and then uh, into place. Just keep doing it, and you know, once you get it on there, you can actually shift them around quite a bit with once you have a couple wraps on there. And then I put a few wraps down so that way the veiling won't move once I do cut it. And I kind of tweak the butts at a 45 degree angle. That way when I cut flat against the shank, I get a little bit of taper built into it. So go ahead and make off your thread. Now uh, you're going to want to prepare a piece of hurl. Sometimes doing that where you hold it and hold the material in your right hand compared to your left hand makes it easier to tie on and then you're not mashing down like the tail valians in the tail. So I'll put a few good wraps on there. Now, as you make sure you don't have any wax on your fingers, as you wrap up, put it in catch by touching the hurl with your uh, middle or um, ring finger of your left hand. And that just holds it in place as you get ready to put the next wrap. And it gives you a little bit more control to put precision wraps down. So this is the part where good heavily waxed thread really comes in handy with the hurl. It'll, it'll catch it a lot better. I've cut out a lot of the sections of me re-waxing the silk just because it doesn't need to be seen. Um, but I pretty much do it after every operation in preparation for the next step.
So and then I lick my finger and I stroke down the the barbs of the hurl so that way they're out of the way when you go to tie in your floss for your underbody and for the rear section of the fly and your tensils and everything. And that's a start. Can't have the marriage of